Today we're building an app that shows us a live updating stream graph of transaction volume on Coinbase's GDAX cryptocurrency exchange. So we'll be able to see in real time how many events happen for Bitcoin, Ethereum and Litecoin. Why? Because we have the data. Oh, and a reader asked me to show them how to do React Native data visualization. That's also why. Okay, let's do this. If you follow along with this tutorial, in about 10 minutes you will have a working app and you will learn WebSockets, React Native SVG, and how to use D3 stack to create stream graphs. Also some Redux stuff and the basics of D3. We have our cryptocurrency visualization app. It shows us the current value of all three crypto coins combined, each one individually, and a general stream graph of transaction volume in three second chunks. If you make it horizontal, it eventually updates and the stream graph still looks nice. And if you haven't noticed, values in our app are updating live in real time. As soon as a transaction is made on GDAX, we see it in our app. Let me show you how to build this in four steps. One is the boilerplate, two is talking to the GDAX exchange to get the data, three is generating the stream graph and making it pretty, and four is rendering all the metadata that makes the stream graph actually useful. And I will be copy pasting code because you don't want to see me make a bunch of mistakes. We start by initializing our app and installing some dependencies. Make sure you're using React Native 043 and React Native SVG 4.5, otherwise some of the things might not fit together. With the running app, we have to first update our index iOS to use a new app component that we're creating. Touch source index.js. And then we copy paste a bunch of boilerplate into source index.js where we create a new app component just for our app. I'm gonna comment this out for now. And we also need an empty actions file and an, a default reducer which doesn't do anything yet. Great. We have an empty app. It has a so far empty Redux store connected to the app component. We have we're rendering a provider and inside our connected app. And in component did mount, we're gonna init our data loading from GDAX, and I'll show you that next. And our default reducer is basically just empty. GDEX is Coinbase's coin exchange for Bitcoin, Ethereum and Litecoin and we're going to use their WebSocket API to get real-time data about transactions happening in uh, real time. The message we're interested in is the so-called match message, which means that a trade occurred between two orders, either a buy or a sell or well, if somebody's buying, somebody else is selling. So a trade between two orders is what we're... Usually you can assume that the last trade that happened is the current current spot price of a commodity. So that's the definition we're going to use to calculate our current value of a specific coin. And we're going to use windows of three seconds each to calculate the transaction volume of uh, transactions so that we can generate the stream graph. The majority of our communication with GDAX happens in our Redux actions or rather tanks. As mentioned earlier, we have a tank called init data that initializes communication with GDAX. We start by fetching a list of available products. In this case, it's going to be BTC slash USD, Ethereum slash USD and so on. When we have the products, we dispatch a set products action, which looks like this. It sends products to our reducer, which then saves them in state. We connect to the socket. This is another tank action. And connect socket essentially initializes a new web socket. This is something that we get in React Native by default. And when the socket is open, we send a message to GDAX saying, hey, we want to listen to events happening to, this, to these products, blah, blah, blah. We send that message. And after that, we start receiving messages for each time something happens with a particular product. 
We filter them to only look at match events. And for each one, we dispatch an add value function or rather an add value action, which adds that particular value to the list of values for that product. To make this really work, we have to add stuff to our reducer. So for set products, we make a new copy of state and add a list of products as keys in our prices value. For add value, we do something similar where we copy the new state into new state, except that for a particular product, we override its values array with, an, with a new array with concatenated. And to make all this fire, we re we re-add the dispatch init data in component did mount in the main app. So see, it's, it's trying to talk to GDAX. And now we should see some action going on in our uh, debugger. So you get the set products action and then add value. And this is going to just continue going and going. So now it's time to add the actual stream graph and all that stuff. This is what a stream graph looks like. It's perfect for showing time series and how they change over time, which is exactly what we want to do with our transaction volume visualization. We're going to build it with React Native SVG and D3. The graph is built out of two components. We use transaction volume graph as our smart data store connected component. And all it does is it renders an SVG with a particular width and height calculated from dimensions of window and inside a stream graph, which is one of those representational components that doesn't actually know anything about our data store. The stream graph itself is a fairly reusable component that, well, to make it simpler, we put everything, all of the D3 calculations, all of the stream graph calculations into the same render function. Ideally, we could reuse them with multiple re-renders and stuff, but because we don't have a lot of data, and because phones today are super, super fast, we can ignore best practices and kind of just do everything in one function. It starts with D3 stack, which is a D3 way of saying, take all of this data and make sure that everything that is on the same X, so at the same time, stacks on top of one another when you're calculating positions for the graph. This then gives us something that we can feed directly into the area generator, which generates sh SVG shapes for areas. And we're also using a couple of scales, an X and Y scale. To, it helps us translate time into width and Y, so the size of each bucket into height. In the end, we go through the series and generate a new path, um, a new path element for each entry. Oh, and before this shows up, we also need a helper function in our helpers.js file because this is what we use to this is what we use to translate between data as it's stored in our reducers into something that the stack generator understands. The idea is that we first chunk our data set into three second chunks. Then we calculate the beginning and end time of our data set. And in the end, we create a list of entries where each key is a specific value for our currencies. Now, if we add a render for this in our app, we should see, there you go, we have a stream graph. It doesn't look like much right now, but after it loads up with more data, it's gonna look amazing, I promise. Metadata is all about taking values out of our Redux store and displaying it as text. It makes the whole stream graph thing a lot more useful because you can actually see what's going on and you can read and understand what you're actually looking at. All of those things are really, really good when it comes to data visualization. We're gonna have two metadata components. One is gonna show the current crypto values of our coins and another is gonna show some data about our transaction volume, like the average our current value component is relatively simple, I would say, I would think. It's a Redux connected component. So it's a Redux, connect, Redux connected component that takes some values out of current state. Um, the values it takes are the sum of all, of all last values of each coin and the, the current last values of a particular coin. Then it displays them as some subtitles and headings and so on. And it's best if I just show you what that looks like. 
and there you go we have the current values of all three coins that we're looking at now for the description we have another relatively easy component which actually does a little bit more than the than the current value component does and let me show you okay so what the description component does is it first takes the time the all of the times in our data set and all of the prices then if we already if we don't have start yet it renders waiting for data which you saw down here then it reuses the chart values function to get to get counts of all data in the buckets gets a d3 time formatter to make the pretty time down here and basically then goes through our data and renders d3 ma minimum d3 maximum and stuff like that and voila that's basically the whole app. I think that was just about 10 minutes and now you have everything working, right? If stuff isn't working, you should definitely check the source on GitHub, read the connected article, and you should probably subscribe to this channel and subscribe by email as well so you can get the next app that I'm building in two weeks. Your name, love, where you came from